Today I got a budget build for you guys using a spare case, spare processor, uh, and some other budget new parts. Let's check it out. Let's go over the specs, yeah? For fans, I got these Apivia fans. There is a five pack of these on Amazon for $30, and you, they have a three pack and I believe a two pack, and you can go a little cheaper. The cool thing about these ones is they flow about like uh, 53 CFM, and they light up great. It, they're not like four LED or five LED fans that you usually see in LEDs, but uh, or in LED fans, but they're 15 LEDs. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but you see all the little dots all in, all in here? All those little dots, all those are LEDs. That's a ton of LEDs, man. These things light up bright. I use them in the do case build, the white one, and that's how I decided to go with these ones as well. They're of the more silent variety. I believe they're in the 20 dB range, and uh, they have the little rubber things, uh, the sound dampener, so that's really nice. Five for $30, it's a pretty good price. They're a Pivia, and the, uh, it comes with a nice long wire. And you could, uh, you could do it either with Molex or with the uh, regular 3-pin fan header. So they're pretty nice overall. I, I, I kind of like them. Those are the fans. Let's check out the processor. This is the same processor that was in Rusty's build. Um, there's a video on that one that will be linked in the description below as well as a link to all the, all the gear being used today. So uh, he went with a Core i3-4170 and has since moved on which is good because we're starting low on that socket for a budget build and when you start low you have that opportunity to upgrade and so now this is getting passed down to Zolman's girlfriend and well it's 93-4170, gigahertz it should be plenty for you know for games and just to get, get by to cool it I had a Hyper 212 Plus lying around because I had since moved my main PC on to a, a Deep Cool Captain 240EX you can see it right there glowing red and that's this guy right here so i mean it's a bit of an overkill for an i3 4170 but i have it the motherboard's out i can put the bracket on it and, you know i have it lying around so who cares why not and it'd also be set up for a future processor upgrade where you don't really have to deal with upgrading the cooling either if you wanted to upgrade uh the cooling solution for a heavier processor well it's all ready to go for hard drives i have some spare 500 gigabyte 7200 RPM laptop drives and I have them set up in this one little bracket that can hold two of them at once and then the case itself uses this black plastic sliding adapter that I can just slide them in. I'm going to be running these in RAID 0 to get maximum performance out of spinning drives and also double up the space because 500 gigabytes these days isn't all that much. Since the 93470 is still DDR3 based I went with Kingston HyperX Fury RAM. This is uh, going to be 8 gigs. That's two 4 gigabyte sticks of DDR3 1600. Should be plenty. I like the black. It'll fit the theme of the case. Can't forget the most important piece. The graphics card. A PNY GeForce 950. As for the motherboard, it is an MSI H81 ME33. It's the same exact motherboard that we used for Rusty's budget bill. And overall, I think it's a pretty good, pretty good little guy pretty cheap they're like forty five dollars it's really nice actually uh, the only thing that even though it does say it's, does say that it has USB 3.0 it does not have a USB 3.0 header this case a Corsair Carbide 400R has USB 3.0 up front so we ran into the same problem with Rusty and uh, my solution to that was this little guy this little six dollar part converts a USB 3.0 connection to work with the USB 2.0 header which this motherboard has. So, with that said, everything will work and this will be nice. For the power supply, we want this guy, Rosewell Glacier. 80 plus bronze, 600 watt. It got pretty good reviews on Amazon and overall I can't find anything bad about it, so I'm gonna stick with that. The three year warranty isn't the greatest of warranties, but I built Rusty's previous computer eight years ago with a Rosewell Stallion series power supply and it's been working fine ever since and now since he's upgraded, he upgraded his power supply as well. I have that sitting in a drawer now as a tester and in my experience, Rosewell power supplies are, are, are fine. I, I know that different uh, sub brands that they use like Glacier and Hive and all those other ones, 
they uh, they're made by different OEMs, so they're different series are completely different qualities. Just because one is good doesn't mean the other one will be good. But I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of a chance on this one. Three-year warranty, budget parts, it's not that big a deal. So hopefully everything will turn out well. The alternative was a Seasonic 600 watt as well, or I think it was a 550 watt semi-modular. And, and it was like 50, 55 bucks, which is pretty good. But by the time I got around to ordering it, it was out of stock. So this was the alternative for the, for the money. Back to the fans real quick. So because there are going to be five fans plus one that's already in the case, six fans total, that motherboard only has like two, maybe three headers max. We got to we gotta figure out a solution there. We'll go with a, a uh, some sort of fan controller. Fantex, Fantex makes a really nice one. And it's this little guy right here. Uh, PWM Fan Hub is what they call it. Their actual part number is, uh, you know, it's not really on here actually. But if you just go to Amazon and type in, oh, there it is, ph-pwhub underscore zero one. This little guy is very interesting in the sense that even though it calls itself a PWM fan hub, it will let you regulate fan speeds of three pin fans by voltage. So it translates a PWM signal into multiple voltage signals in order to regulate fan speed that way, just based off of processor load, which is pretty cool. So even, even your processor will connect to this one, rather the, the CPU heatsink fan. It has a slot for, for the heatsink fan on it, and then all the other slots are slaved to that one, basically. And it also comes with a little adapter, so you can get something like eight fans on this thing, maybe more, I, I don't remember. But uh, the cool thing about this too, since you're probably wondering at this point, is it is powered separately by a serial ATA power. So you're not drawing all that power from just one header. No, this provides its own power and then will adjust fan speeds accordingly from a PWM signal to a voltage signal. And that's pretty cool. Okay, with all that said, it's time to build. So let's get started. There we have it. It's all done, ready to go. It's been deemed the quick draw. So with the computer all ready to go, um, I've already made the phone call for the owner to come pick it up. And uh, it's time to get installing some games, at least just to get them ready. Um, it scored a 52.85 on Firestrike, which is a pretty, pretty good score. I mean, this build ended up only costing, ooh, in the range of about $260, and that's factoring in uh, a couple of free parts and a couple of used parts or parts that were donated but things that were purchased brand new where the motherboard uh, the processor was used but it was a purchase uh, and we got that for eighty dollars um, the motherboard was like 45 new the power supply and the fans and uh, the ram as well and those are all the new pieces everything else is is donated or second hand or whatever you know and uh, overall, I think it's going to make a pretty good budget system. It's going to be paired with the lower resolution screen right now because as per budget, um, 
a new screen wasn't in that budget. So uh, it's going to go with either a 1280 by 1024 screen or a 1366 by 768 screen. So slightly small, but that's actually going to make it easier for this computer to run the current games and it'll work out for now. And uh, going forward, it's got an upgradable processor. You can throw a Devil's Canyon i7 in there eventually. And uh, it also has, an, uh, you know, considering it only has a 950 graphics card, that can also be upgraded to something a lot more hefty. So uh, this is Chris, Coalition Gaming. If you guys like this video, make sure to click that like button, click that subscribe button for more. If you dislike this video, hit that dislike button, leave a comment, let's talk about it. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.